Hello, and welcome to the third installment of our three-part laser cutter tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss setting up the laser cutter machine. As mentioned at the beginning of the other two tutorials, if you prefer to read a transcript of this tutorial alongside screenshots, please visit the Stanford TLTL website where a copy is available. Before we begin, it is very important to note that the laser cutter has the potential to catch fire if left unattended. You can never, ever, under any circumstances, start a print job and leave the laser cutter unattended. Some materials have a propensity to catch fire when cut, and if you're not there to stop the machine, the whole machine may be destroyed alongside everything around it. This is not frequent, but it does happen. Several research labs have been destroyed by careless laser cutting. That said, if you're around to monitor the laser cutter, it is actually a very safe machine. To begin our exploration of the hardware, let's look at the machine and talk about the important switches and connections. On the left side of the machine, we have the power input and on-off switch. If the LCD status on the front of the machine is not lit up, you probably need to turn on the machine, which you do here. At the rear of the machine, you will find the USB and Ethernet plugs, which should be connected to your computer or network hub. After ensuring everything is connected properly, turn on the machine, which will activate the status panel. The status panel is relatively simple, and as a beginner, you will only need to learn about the stop, go, reset, and point to controls. The other buttons link to more advanced features, which will not be covered in this tutorial, but are explained in the user manual. For your reference, if at any point the engraver becomes confused and produces strange messages on the status panel, first try the reset button. But if that does not work, try turning off the machine, waiting 15 seconds, and then turning it on again, which should resolve the problem. Moving inside the engraver, which is done so by opening the clear lid, we see the engraving head that is positioned in the upper left corner of the machine. This is considered the home or origin position. As you will see, the two rulers on the horizontal and vertical axes start at zero in this corner. Moving outside the engraver, we will now discuss the vacuum and air controls. In our case, the vacuum is always running, so there is no switch. The air assist, on the other hand, must be activated by opening the blue valve. Your arrangement might be different, but make sure you understand how to turn on the vacuum and air before cutting. They are essential controls, and you cannot safely operate the machine without them. Before making our first engraving, we are going to send a test print to the laser cutter so we can check the alignment of the cuts. To do so, first place your material in the machine so it lines up with the origin. After doing so, leave the lid open and activate the pointer feature on the status panel. This will create a small red dot underneath the printing head. Next, use your software's print dialog to send the file to the machine. Once the file is sent, the engraver will load the file in its queue and the LCD will read job, colon, a number, and then your file name. At this point, Check to make sure the lid is still open and press go. By keeping the lid open during the job, you have activated a safety feature which disables the machine's cutting laser. Instead, by using the secondary pointer laser, which is no more powerful than a light, we can watch as the machine traces its path to be sure that our cuts will occur where we expect. This is especially important when making cuts on scrap materials as we don't want our new cuts to overlap any of our existing cutouts. When you are satisfied that everything is lined up successfully, press stop, which will pause the machine. Once the machine is paused, if you press go, the job will resume. Or if you press reset, the job will be canceled. For our tutorial, press reset, which will return the machine to its origin position. Now that we know the layout is correct, we can resend the file to the engraver using the print dialog. After doing so, the LCD should once again read job, colon, a number, and then your file name. If so, activate the vacuum and air valves, close the lid, and press go. Because the lid is now closed, the cutting laser will activate and begin to engrave and or cut your piece. As the laser cuts, you may be very tempted to watch, but much like staring at the sun, staring at a laser is not a good idea, and you should avoid continuous direct eye contact. That said, it is extremely important to monitor the laser cutter at all times, in order to ensure that your material does not catch on fire. Because the laser effectively melts its way through your material, in certain cases a small fire can occur. If this happens, you can allow it to burn for two to three seconds, but if it gets out of control, press stop straight away. In certain cases, you may need to open the lid to extinguish a fire, and if so, be sure to keep the vacuum running so that you minimize the release of toxic fumes. If you repeatedly experience fires when cutting, you probably need to turn down the vector frequency control in the epilog printing preferences. Assuming that all goes well, the laser will complete its job, beep, and return to the origin. At this point, while you'll be very tempted to open the lid and retrieve your new parts immediately, it is advisable to wait 10 to 20 seconds in order to allow the fumes to clear from the machine. After this brief period, turn off the vacuum and air, then open the lid to examine your brand new parts. 
Congratulations! You now should have completed your first laser parts. If you have followed along with our tutorial series, you'll now have a pocketable cheat sheet that will help you to remember the laser cutter's important terminology. We hope that you have found these tutorials helpful, and remember that there are many more resources available on the Stanford TLTL site. Again, well done on finishing, and good luck bringing all of your future ideas to life.